Hello and welcome. In this tutorial I will show you how to achieve this effect in Blender using the shader graph. It is fully procedural so with just a few tweaks you can easily change the result depending on what you're going for. So let's jump into Blender. Let's delete everything and make sure that we have the node wrangler enabled in add-ons. So just go to edit preferences, search for node wrangler, make sure that it's enabled because we will use it later. Now let's add a UV sphere, which we will use as a preview mesh for our material. Give it some subdivisions so that it's nice and smooth. Change the shading to smooth. And that's all. and that's that's it. Let's just move to shading. Now with the sphere selected, let's click new to get a new material. And it, let's start, start putting some stuff in. So first let's put a noise texture. Um, noise texture here and when you click shift and alt no sorry shift and control and then left click on the node then it gives you the preview of the node to this point now with the node selected click control and t and if you enabled node wrangler then you have those two extra node generated for you so you don't have to search for them and that's important because we will use it to animate the shader later. Let's just change it from generated to object and put in some values to make it more interesting. Something like that. Maybe get some distortion so that we have this swirly pattern which will help us uh, later to drive some color variation to it. First we will focus on the color for the fire particles itself and later we will worry about the alpha cutouts and the movement so after that let's give it a little bit more contrast with help of color ramp just slide those in slightly so that we have like better definition and then we can use another color ramp to start putting in the colors so let's go from from red through let's say orange up to yellow yeah this already starts looking like a sun surface let's say actually we can pull up a timeline and start some animation so what we can do is we can either switch to 4d and animate this value with hashtag frame divided by let's say 180 let's click play and you can see how this swirliness this pattern gives it this nice sun like vibe now we can what we actually can do as well is have some input value to put in scale just so it's going to be easier for us to manipulate the scale of the whole material let's leave it at 1.5 for now okay so the color is done for now now if we switch to rendered view then you can see that even if you plug it into base color, you can't see anything because there are no lights currently in the scene. So obviously it's all dark and not presentable. So what we can do instead is plug it into emission. Yeah, this one looks better, but still not that interesting. So what we're gonna do is we want to play around with the emission strength maybe something like that and let's move on to the second branch for the material so again we will start with a noise texture let's put it to 4d again ctrl t to get those extra nodes let's change it from object let's also have this value input to scale just so that we can easily manipulate scale, we don't have to type in three different values. 
Let's leave this guy here like it is. Detail at 5, this one may point 6. And distortion at 3. So again we have this swirly pattern, similarly like before. But now what we want to do is we want to give it a much much higher contrast. With color ramp that we set from linear to constant and this way we can get a nice alpha cutout of the particles depending on how dense we want the material to be. Just to make sure that uh, this alpha information has on the values of 0 and 1, we can simply run it through math node with greater than and 0.5 is a great threshold for it. Then let's also plug this color ramp to a emission strength and see what it does. Basically whatever is black has a emission strength of zero and whatever is white emission strength of one. So with that, because we don't have any lights on the scene, you can already see that only some parts are visible and some are not, but you still can't see through the ball. For that we need to add another shader, this time it's a transparent shader, transparent BSDF, which we will mix using mix shader with the original material and as a factor we will just invert this value that is running emission strength so that everything that is not white will be invisible basically. Yeah so here we just make sure that it's uh, that it's just black and white values. We run it through invert which does exactly what it says it inverts and go through and now if you check, then it's black. Black is because we didn't enable alpha. So in order to do that, go to the material properties and blend mode change to alpha clip. Just let it compile the shaders for a bit. And there you go, you have like um, an empty sphere. It still looks kind of flat but we can easily fix that with some render settings, so maybe enable bloom a little bit, maybe tone it down a bit. And what else can we do is uh, use a map range node here before the emission strength because right now the emission strength is either 0 or 1 but what we want to do is we want this emission to be higher so we're going through map range and basically from the value 0 to 1 we want to remap it to be either 0 or let's say 7 7 sounds like a good value and with the bloom enabled it should give us pretty nice pretty nice results already let's see how it looks like with the alpha on Yeah, the scale is a little bit too big. Let's try to put it down. 0 0.8 maybe. And let's try to play it. So right now, if we play it, we can see that only those things behind are moving. It is because we only animate this value. In order to, um, to manipulate the alpha, we have to do the same in here. So just type in frame divided by, let's give it a bigger number, 400 maybe, and let's see now. Now you can see that those particles are actually moving by themselves. But right now it's moving kind of randomly, in random direction, but if we want this to be a fire particle then it would be nice if they moved also on the z-axis up. 
So for that, we will need to um, animate here uh, this value, which is the value. So again, frame divided by, let's say 130. See how it looks like. Okay, it's going down right now. So let's just multiply it by minus one. And now the particles are slowly moving up, which gives it quite nice result. Now, if you want to make them the particles bigger, smaller, you just use this slider to manipulate how much should be visible. If you go all the way here, then you can see that there is this nice sun-like texture visible, which by itself looks quite nice, I think. But then again, those particles can be easily manipulated here. Now, um, as this is a procedural shader, uh, you can also use a hue and saturation node in the color, just so that with one just so that with one value we can change the hue of them to make it look a bit different. So we can just change it to green, cut it out a bit more, and now it looks more like a, like some fairy tale particles. We can also play with the values of this noise texture. For example, the detail, we can take it down and then they are uh, the edges are not as scattered, but they are more soft and maybe it has more anime-like look to it. So yeah, I mean, whatever you want, you just play around with those values and the color. And yeah, that's basically it. Then for the presentation, I just simply took the sphere, copy it, scale, and give it different rotation so that it does not um, rotate. I mean, the animation is just different between those two spheres. And then put an object in there. Uh, let's put the monkey. Let's give it some subdivisions so that it's smooth. Maybe some point light. Yeah, slightly bigger to give softer shadows. And now some camera to see all of that. Let's enable camera to view so that we can actually see what we're doing. Let's reset the location to be at zero. Maybe change the aspect ratio to be square. Let's play around with the plume as well. Yeah, I like it like this quite nice. All right. Camera settings. Maybe scale the bigger one as well a bit. And just give this whole thing a depth of field with focus on the Suzanne. F stop, let's say 0.6. Sounds like a good shallow depth of field. And maybe for some extra details, we can enable a motion blur. Now, if you click render, you should have this nice result. And again, because it's fully procedural, feel free to experiment by yourself, do stuff however you want. Yeah, so that's it, guys. I would love to see your creative results. So you can either send it to me on Instagram or tag me on Twitter. Links to my profiles are in the description. Let me know if you like it in the comments and see you in the next one.